everyone, it's me. So this week I wanted to talk again about words that are specifically different in Canada versus England. I did a part one of this video you probably maybe have seen, maybe. That was words specifically used in an office setting that are different. These words are basically things that are just like day-to-day -day life that you might hear that are specifically different from Canada and England. Just a side note, it is absolutely pouring outside. So if you hear, you know, torrential rain, please just pretend you can't hear it. But yeah, that's it. We're just going to talk about words that are different, if that's cool with you. Now, for people who don't know me, I am from Ontario and I'm now living in Kent. So these, it's, um, these, what's the word I'm thinking of? These words. These examples that I'm going to share are specifically from A, what I say in Ontario, and B, what I hear now in Kent. I realize that across Canada and across England, there might be different words. Okay, I totally understand. Y'all tell me that every time anyway, but I, I, I get it. It's just easier to say England and Canada, so just, you know, bit of information, I guess. What am I saying? I don't know. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, what's one of the... Okay, this one's an easy one, and I think we might have talked about it before. I guess let's say the English one first. So in England, you will hear boot, the boot of your car, as in where you put your stuff in the back. But in Canada, we would say trunk, the trunk of a car. So boot versus trunk, um, they are not similar at all. But I think you hear them enough in like television and things that that one's not too surprising and you, you're okay if you say trunk in England, people will understand. Just like if you said boot in Canada, people will probably understand because we, we see a lot of like um, English and British uh, TV shows and things. So people will understand if you say the, the different one, but yeah, boot versus trunk. Another one that I personally don't say because it doesn't feel natural to me just yet, but uh, lift in England versus elevator in Canada. So again, not similar at all, um, but you can get away with saying either or, obviously. Our countries are very intertwined and they are very similar, so you can get away with saying your native one in the other country, but obviously it's good to know what the actual word is. What I used to do when I worked at a college was if I was talking to a student, I would say lift because it was just easier to say the word that they would know than say elevator and then have like a 20 minute conversation with them about oh, where are you from like why'd you say elevator are you American like I've always wanted to go to America and stuff like that so sometimes it's just easier to say the native word even if it doesn't necessarily feel normal but if I'm talking with friends or like a day-to-day -day thing with people that I know it's more likely that I'll say elevator just because lift doesn't really feel normal yet and I think that's a good point for any expats when you're going to a country that still speaks, say, your language, like Canada versus England. Um, definitely pick up as much of the native culture as you can in the native language and the slang and stuff like that. But don't force it to fit in. I had this um, question, I, I don't know, a few years ago. One of my videos was like, is it rude for you to say the normal word or is it rude for you to say your native word. And I kind of come to the understanding it's like, say what, what feels natural and what feels normal and over time your own vocabulary will start to like soak up the English vocabulary, if that makes sense. So I don't necessarily say lift or um, boot because those ones don't really feel normal to me, but I do say other ones and I do say other slang. And maybe in a year or so boot and lift will feel normal. So I think if you're an expat, just say what feels normal, and that's that's all you can do, okay? Just take a breather. If you're living in a foreign country, it's hard, okay? This is one of the things you don't need to worry about. Okay, another word, set, like a set of words that are different from Canada and England. A courgette in England. A courgette sounds very fancy. Um, from my understanding, we call those zucchinis. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. So I'm sure there's some sort of reason behind it, but I 
didn't bother to research that before doing this video. Real sorry. So yeah, in England you'll hear courgette, and in Canada you'll most likely hear zucchini. Fantastic! In the same vein, it's like um, aubergine here in England, and in Canada we say eggplant. Pretty sure they're the same thing. I'm not sure why the word preference is different. Um, you know, they're both vegetables, of which, you know, who cares that much? An eggplant? Like, that one's funny because aubergine, like, is a very formal sounding word. It sounds like, I don't know, maybe even French a little bit? Like, very posh sounding, and then Canadians were just like, eggplant. <laughs> eggplant. <laughs> okay, cool. Another word difference that you might hear a lot if you're living in Canada or in England as an expat is plaster in England versus band-aid in Canada. So they technically are both like adhesive bandages, I guess would be the technical term. But here in England, you know, you have a cut, you put on a plaster. In Canada, we call them band-aids. Specifically Ontario, we call them band-aids because that is actually a brand name of adhesive bandages. So just like in England, sometimes you guys refer to things as the brand name, like Tipex is a brand. We talked about that in my last video. Just like Band-Aid. Band-Aid is the brand, but we call all of them Band-Aids, whether it's that brand or not. In one of my previous videos, I talked about that I had a Band-Aid on my hand and it was really distracting. And I did get a lot of comments from people being like, um, don't you mean plaster? I think you meant to say plaster. And it's just like, nah, I said what I meant to say, but thank you anyway. And that's one of those things, plaster does not sound normal to me, so I don't say it. I realize that's the word here, and I totally respect that, but I physically would not say that naturally, so I'm not going to force it. So for me, it's Band-Aid, but if you're English, you probably say plaster. What a wonderful world. Can you hear that rain? It's unbelievable. Another one that you will hear a lot if you're an expat in either country, here in England, you're going to go fill up your car, you're going to get petrol. Okay, you're going to get petrol. In Canada, you're going to get gas. Most likely from a gas station. Same with like the US, gas station. Like I feel like that's very North American. You're getting gas from a gas station, um, but not so much here. You're going to get petrol. So, cool. This one is really silly and it's not really important, but I just found it out and I thought it was funny. In England, you guys do Where's Wally? You know that guy with the striped... He's got a striped shirt and the hat, I think, right? That's what he looks like. Where's Wally? Very cute. In Canada, and I'm pretty sure North America as a whole, we call him Waldo. So I guess you guys are like more familiar, you know, you call him Wally, like first name basis, whatever. We call him Waldo. Where's Waldo? And when I was googling this, I realized that um, a bunch of other countries have different names for the same guy, which is just fascinating. I, I didn't know, and now you know. And I hope your life is better. <laughs> okay, the last one that I hear a lot living in England as a Canadian is a car park. So you want to go to the mall, you're going to leave your car in the car park, or maybe the car park's full. That's annoying. Car park. In Canada, and I think I can say for most of North America, we say parking lot. So um, you're going to the mall, the parking lot is full. How annoying. Really, they're saying the same thing in just like a slightly different way. So a car park, that's very like visual. You are parking your car. You're, it's a car park, right? You're in this park space. You're parking your car. But in Canada, we would say parking lot. It's a lot for parking your car, obviously. Parking lot. Yeah, I hear that one a lot. I tend to say car park sometimes. That one comes like a little bit more naturally. Um, not always though, it just depends. Depends on the day, you know, sometimes. And with that, those are some of the words that are different in Canada versus England, or more specifically from Ontario versus Kent. If you guys have any other words that you know that are different, please leave a comment, because I want to do a bunch of these. I think it's really fascinating that we both speak English and we both have different variances in words. Is that a correct sentence? I'm not totally sure. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, bye!